Hello, welcome to my talk uh, about Ripple. It's an IP specific routing protocol for lossy, low power and lossy networks. That's what the acronym is standing for, LNNs. My name is Alexander Aring. Stefan Schmidt, Schmidt is not here, but he also leading the IoT workshop at this conference. And Michael Richardson, he is part of the IETF World Group, which uh, develops this routing protocol. And what I was doing is a necessary part for the Dean of Kernel to have a specific handling there, which cannot be handled in the user space. Yeah. So uh, next slide. It's what's Ripple. Yeah, I, I mentioned it is a uh, um, routing protocol for IPv6 only. It's for low power and lossy networks. It's like for IoT devices, small uh, sensor networks, and so on. There's an ITF routing protocol working group, which is role, which uh, specified this uh, routing protocol. And what is my talk about? Um, it is more about, I want to give you a small overview how it works. Sure, there is a little bit more complex behind it. Uh, we simplified, we make a simplification about this routing protocol. It is only when you, it, it is, it, it has a tree-like topology with, um, a root node and the, no the nodes in this topology have only one parent and nodes can have n childs. There's a, a lot of out of scope things which are not handled in this presentation is like self-healing of this routing protocol. It is not handling floating root nodes. That means when a node can switch to become the root and the root becomes a node, or you have also multiple road nodes. This is also not handled in this presentation. And there's also security features and a lot of things more. So what um, Ripple defines uh, upward routes and downward routes, and two kinds of nodes uh, modes. This is storing and non-storing mode. So I will talk about these two modes, which are the different because in the Linux, we was always, there was always the possibility to handle the storing mode, but not the non-storing mode. I will talk about this later, why it was not handled before into the Linux kernel. So to talk about the upward routes in the specific two modes, it works the same yeah, in regarding of the upward route. But our upward route, that are what the name already propagated, it is how the nodes can reach the root node. For example, we can see on the left side a uh, very basic, simple topology. And on the right side, we can see a tree like topology, which maybe Ripple can build up. And upward route means. When we see, for example, the uh, node six, how it can reach the root node. Especially in the root node, you have something like a border router node, which makes, uh, in sense of six low pen, you it makes a translation from a six low pen IPv6 network to a real IPv6 world. You can imagine that the uh, root node one here um, have a connection to the internet. Um, and all other things is your private um, sensor networks. Um, for example, for the upward route, there exists a special um, mechanism in Ripple, which is named uh, parent selection. I make it here at a root at the node four, you can see um, it can decide if it wants to have a parent two or three to reach the root node. In this example, it chose the two 
the node two to reach the node uh, root node, but it can also be the three node, or it can also select the five node. The, there's a little bit more handling according to, has also to do something with, with the hop count to the root node. But uh, if you have a specific selection like in four, it has also more information are collected like the link quality between nodes when it's a wireless net network or the account of the dropping of packets and something like that. However, there exists a parent selection and the parent selection will be done over some ICMP6 message, which Ripple defines to select a parent regarding to the upward routes. So the downward routes in storing mode, now there's a difference between storing and non-storing mode is that every child have uh, a via route, for example, um, the root node knows all the shines, how to reach all no child nodes over a specific uh, via route. Um, for example, six, the root node six from the node one, from the view of the uh, node one, is reachable over two, but also all sub nodes which are apparent has also in their routing table how to reach every node in the subtree. For example, two nodes how to reach also the six over five, and then uh, everybody, then the whole network can be reached. Um, this has only the uh, a big problem that it's highly maintainable because if the um, topology will be changed, um, you need to update every routing table and your sub nodes in two and five and something like that. And every node need to store a lot of routes in their routing table. This is the difference in non-storing mode. In non-storing mode, uh, the download routes is um, done only that the root node knows how to reach the child nodes by placing a source routing header um, into the actual IPv6 packet. And for example, how one can reach um, six it is only placed, this information is only placed in the root node. All other nodes has only the, a default route for the upward route. And for example, the um, one can be, uh, six can be reached over two, five, six. That's then here this path. And over the download routes, everybody can um, reach the node. So, all together with non downward routes and upward routes in non storing mode, it looks like this. Everybody can reach the node, uh, the, uh, the root node, over its um, upward route. That's a default route. When it doesn't know it, then it just sends it to the parent. And um, the queen arrows here are the downward routes, which are only placed by the root node. For example, when four wants to reach six, then it goes over the over two, and then from two to one, and one knows how to reach, that's the root node. The root node knows everything about the topology, and it plays the source order header to reach six, which is over two, five, and six. The big advantage here is that every subnode has only one route to be set, which is the parent selection route to reach the root node. 
and it is a less of maintains because we don't need to update every um, subtree, every sub node uh, to update how to reach um, other nodes in, in chain when the topology is changed. The root node need only to be updated. So the source ordering header is what I already said, it's only the only the root node, which is in case here the one uh, node one will be insert the um, the source sorting header, and what I already said is uh, it's IPv6 only. All other nodes need to be handled the source sorting header like two, four, six, four, three, except the node they need to forwarding. The IPv6 header, IPv6 packet, according to the source routing information, which is done by doing some address wrapping, and it has also a loop detection um, by just checking if the same if, if in the address segment in the if the address in the address segment are assigned on the root node, I implemented a fancy function there. If somebody is interesting in this, you can look into adreconf.c to check on such function. And yeah, of course, it also for little sensor networks and also do some compression algorithm. This compression algorithm is mainly because um, they share mostly the same IPv6 prefix, and then in the segments, um, you can compress a lot of bytes there to reduce the payload. If you reducing the payload, you also uh, it's a lot of uh, low power, not sending more bytes, and also such things. So. Yeah, and the compression is more according the it, it's according the set in the segment array of the IPv6 uh, routing header, the source routing header, and the compression is always according the destination address which is inside of the IPv6 IPv6 header, um, and this it basically works that it can elide the same prefix by just saying which bytes are the same. So how I implemented it for the Linux kernel, it is more because we needed to implement uh, uh, the source routing functionality and there exists already a IPv6 segment routing, which is outer source routing protocol for IPv6. And we just did the same thing, it just has a different use case for sensor networks uh, because the compression and a lot of the loop detection is a little bit different. Um, we also was using late late tunnel implementation. It's in um, it's inside the IPv6 um, implementation of the Linux kernel. Then what you can do is just say here, for example, here are when you are in the point of view of the root node, you can just say for destination six, here are the segments. It just works like the uh, other IPv6 segment routing. And what we currently only support is inline header. That means uh, we don't support IP encapsulation yet, but the Ripple protocol has some use case for this where this is necessary, but we don't support this right now. And yeah, the forwarding is always enabled by, it's always compiled in of the, in the inside the Linux kernel, you just need to enable it over the sysfs uh, configuration. And there's just a little helper file, ripple.c in IPv6 to offer some compression helpers 
to compress and uncompress the Ripple source routing header. So, according to user space, there exists a experimental, very experimental user space daemon to just um, prove my work that it works. It um, exchange IPv uh, ICMP with a six message. This is what Ripple is using to um, share all this information about what is the parent selection of four and it's flooding the network with some information. Um, and when every, how it basically works is that the root node stores a tree data structure to represent the topology. So in this case, uh, the root node knows everything about the, to, how the topology is built and how to reach every node. And Ripple D is actually holding a tree data structure to represent the topology. And according to this data structure, it also inserts the um, source routing information. And um, how it works is basically that every node is uh, first creating all upward routes to reach the node. And then every node will tell about the root node what's their parent. And when the root node knows every node, parent's node, and uh, the, which node was telling that it can we construct the tree structure, the topology in a tree data structure, and then insert the source routing information according to that. So, and uh, um, important to say is that um, the upward route is only a, a default route to the parent. Uh, yeah, it's only a default route. So um, now we come into a demo um, I want to show you. So uh, my demo, it is this, um, it uses the Mac 800-215-4HW simulator, which uh, can produce such topology, mesh topology, which you saw in the, on the left side on the slides. Here it uh, works over names, namespaces, I named the namespace according the uh, node ID. One is, for example, the root node, and everybody else are the childs, which are somewhere in the topology. Now, uh, I want to show you the routing table of the root node. And um, for example, I, did, I simplified it here that um, that the MAC address is according to the node ID. For example, uh, four is the node ID four, and, and this is the prefix which everybody shares the same. And um, you can already see when I'm typing this command, I want to show you what I did here. So I'm just doing a IP net NS exec IP6 route. And you can see on node four, we have two segments that uh, this is in point of, this in the view of the root node, you can reach the node ID four over the two segments three and then four. And for example, so the node ID four is over four. Um, there need to be the node ID again in the um, segment to have a loopback route over loopback. So, um, for example, for six, which is a, a more difficult route, you can reach it over the three and four and five and then six again. So. You can also see 
we only using link local addresses for um, the segment. That's what Ripple is using because in combination also with six low pen, this is very fully aligned addresses. They are not uh, showing up in the header and um, this actually worked because link local is not um, route, but every not route able, but uh, every node is their direct neighbor. So this um, still works, and we're using full addresses here. Um, this is how the root node works. It has all these yeah, um, green arrows. How to reach every sub node. What I show want to show you as next is one node address, and we only see here the default route, which is the parent selection. In this case, this node has a parent selection, which is three. How to reach the root node when we um, also want to look how three can reach the root node and it already say from node three the parent selection is one so it's directly connected it has the root node as parent so what i wanted to show you as next is a trace route you can see for example for um for reaching two which i just uh, to show you that it's a, again from point of view is the node ID four and trace out to two. We see that it first the first four hop is three one so it's going upward and then downward again to two which is the next um, which is which has apparent the root node because it has one because it's the one hop only and what i wanted to say here it's it's a little bit buggy right now how to reach four to six um, but it is working i can say afterwards why it works uh, it just stops at at the node itself i need to look into that but in this example, we can see it goes over three, then it's going to the root node, and then down again to three, and then four, which doesn't show up here, and then five and six. And the reason why it works is because I, I, I can still ping this guy. But I think what I saw in my implementation is that the trace route implementation of IP utils is a little bit buggy in um, taking the next header chain. There's some, it only works on a specific um, source route. I, I need to fix, there are still, the patches are still pending to fix trace route against this because the next header chain evaluation is a little bit, um, it doesn't work. Um, I did an ugly hack to make it work. And um, yes, that's everything what I wanted to show. The big disadvantage of, of course, from source routing, from non-storing mode, which using source routing, is that every traffic goes over the root node. In storing mode, this is not necessary because every sub node can reach uh, other nodes directly because every sub node has its own um, routing table which knows about all the subtree. All in non storing mode, only the root node knows that. So the disadvantage here is you have a lot of more traffic, but so far I heard from Michael Richardson, he is working on a combined 
mode where you can combine non-stowing mode and stowing mode when it maybe comes a little bit more complex to deal all with all with all IPv6 routing tables in a node. And the case here why people want to use that is that they don't need to store all these routes in their in their nodes because in case of IoT and six load pan, you have small embedded devices which doesn't have a lot of um, storage mode, uh, storage to store all these things. And in this non-storing mode, you give this information all the root node and the root node can be a device which runs Linux. So, and why was it necessary to change something in the kernel? Because all these forwarding and to place the IPv6 source routing header, then it needs to be handled in the kernel to make it at this point when the kernel creates the IPv6 header, like segment routing as well. And the Storing mode was always possible because that's just uh, adding more um, routes into the nodes. So in the future work, I would say we also want to improve the current Ripple implementation that is not just very experimental. Um, there's a lot of traffic currently to exchange a, a lot of this routing information uh, over ICMP with six message. A lot of overhead is there. This can be reduced. And, um, but this is nothing, this is everything user space. Um, we don't need to, sh but future work in the kernel implementation is still making the encapsulation support which is uh, not there right now. We maybe can look up this in IPv6 uh, segment routing. And there's a lot of different uh, Ripple specific things which maybe need also to be handled in the kernel at least. There's also a hop by hop option, but uh, if this is now necessary to create it, I don't know. Um, Mike Richardson said, something that uh, it's not necessary anymore, but maybe somebody use it and then at least need to be passed. But uh, how these, um, these routes getting placed into the kernel over IP route, it is uh, now supported uh, by just making, uh, by just saying encapsulation, uh, encap this ripple of uh, IP out, and then you can add your segments for this specific node. Um, and yeah. Okay, hello everybody. Um, okay, great. I see already there are two questions coming in. Um, Alexander, can you answer them here? So you have to unmute yourself. And then I think we could have like five to 10 minutes for questions and then we can go to the rest of the session. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you see the two questions, chat window, or? Yes. So the first question, what is uh, special in LNN low, low power and lossy networks that makes it not uh, suitable for standard routing protocols? I think um, 
you can always use the standard routing protocols. But uh, it's always it's to have a lot of things to um, let me let yeah. me chip in there. So one of the problems is that um, with all these wireless sensor networks is that a lot of these things are really mobile and you don't have really a lot of memory storage or anything on the nodes to keep track on all the different um, nodes you might connect to. So that is one of the problems to have like a traditional routing protocol. Another one is that it's, the, it's a lossy network. So there are a lot of um, frames are, might get dropped because they are, because of the mobility or other aspects. So um, that is one of the reasons why Ripple was designed in a way that it's better suited for for something of for some of these scenarios you can actually go and use other uh, routing protocols there i think um, something like open thread used parts of some traditional routing protocols and adjusted them to their own needs as well i don't know the details about that right now but it is possible but you might have higher packet loss um yeah, and uh, thank you. <laughs> it's also uh, the, the, because the memory is also uh, the thing that I heard so far that it, the non storing mode is um, the wider used mode outside, especially in the um, sensor networks, because they have they don't need to store a lot of information into their memory. And the second is what is are the main difference between Ripple and the already existing IPv6 source routing here? Yeah. Um, I asked me the same question. I talked with Michael Richardson about it. So the he answered uh, a little bit uh, funny because you need to ask, uh, you need to swap it around because uh, the source routing header for Ripple was at first there, and then the other thing was uh, there, the IPv6 source routing um, was there, was coming up. And um, he, he told me they have a kind of different use cases. You saw in my Example, I don't use any prefix. I For the destination, for the routing destination, I don't use any um, prefix. I always used a full address. And uh, you can also do that with the routing thing. And it has a specific handling also for the compression of the source routing header that this doesn't exist in the, the other ipv6 source routing protocol and it uh, also handles things a little bit different what i already said in the talk with the loop detection i don't saw that in the other implementation, it's kind of different. The use case is different. I, 